What's going on guys? Uh, today we're talking about my Motorola XCS 3000 radios. <clears throat> I just got them in yesterday. I got them in yesterday from a website called used-radios.com, which the radios work fine, but I didn't think they were working fine until I overadded some batteries from Amazon, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But I did order two used XCS 3000s. What can you expect? The batteries were from 2013. At least one of them were. Uh, this one was from 2013. That one's from 2016. Might not be able to see it. Let's check it out. That's 2016, that's 604, that 6 is 16, or 2006, we don't know, or 2013. So there's those two batteries that came with it. They barely hold true. Uh, during my first work shift, I don't know which one it was. I think it was the 16 one. This one worked. Mm, I didn't transmit pretty much at all, maybe like two or three times my whole shift, but... I was able to listen and monitor for my whole shift. Um, so I've got the two XTSs. I got one XTS 3000 they sent me on the lower UHF band and a Motorola XTS 3000R. And I do have the programming cable and the programming software. I didn't get into it yet. I had them programmed to the frequencies that I needed to. My work issues these. Chinese radios, Beofeng, TID, Retrovius, whatever. I don't really know the name of them. They all look the same. They're all on the same frequencies. Find out what kind of frequency they're on. And uh, they're UHF, uh, like 462.1250 for channel one. That's what we use, 462.1250. But it's not on right now. But this radio here, this is an old 800 megahertz I used to use in my old job. I used to have about five of these, actually. And I actually paid for a subscription service, and I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. A couple of friends I had we would be able to talk across the city at 800 megahertz. A company called MGS uh, Communications. I was using their repeater. Worked fine, but can't do nothing with that around here right now. Um, I'm going to do everything UHF. Plan on getting my GMRS um, license, and I want to build a repeater. So stay tuned. I'm going to be working on that. So I did also order a microphone. I got the talk permit tone, that sound right there that you hear is the t Don't mind my dog, he's trying to eat all the tortilla that I put in the oven there. Um, 48, as you can hear it. Um, well, you can't Power hear. on. What? This is the Beofung, well, it's a TID. I think it's the original producer is Beofung. But they're, like I said, channel one, they, they use 462.1250, so. Testing. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Picking up some interference there. So yeah, they're pretty good radios. I just got the batteries from Amazon delivered right now. That's what I was waiting for to show you so that they could function properly. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm testing to see how long if these radios can work a full work shift. So that's why I'm making ridiculous transmissions because you know I don't transmit all day, but. Mostly monitoring. This one is on scan mode. I have it programmed to scan on one button. This button is a disabled button. This is a monitor. And this is disabled as well. These radios have uh, 16 channels per band with three, well, 16 channels per zone and three zones, A, B, and C. I know it's not focusing, but these are used radios. Um, I was told that the R model, the XTS 3000R, is a fire department retired from FDNY, so that's that. And then I ordered like this, I told you. I don't know if this has to be on the same channel as that because it doesn't have a digital screen or anything, so I'm not sure if it communicates. This works fine. These buttons are synchronized to the original programming of the radio, so this one will scan and this one doesn't do anything. I'm not going to put it on scan mode. That one's scanning right now. The frequencies that I have it set to... These are the first five channels of the typical FRS. And then, like, once it gets to a certain level, I have it, these on, on, on zone two or zone B. And then zone three are my work frequencies. These are the frequencies I use for my work, what I do. I'm a towing, tow truck operator. I drive tow trucks. Um, so, yeah, I got two impressed batteries. This Kenworth mic, Kenwood, I don't know why I say Kenworth, but Kenwood, this Kenwood mic here. Obviously, 
doesn't work with the Motorola stuff. I have it. It goes to this radio. Um, if you're interested in the model number, I'll take a look at that and let you guys know. The battery still works. I kind of want to sell it, but I kind of want to keep it for just memory, you know, part of my collection. So I still have that. And then this radio here has 16 channels UHF, and this was issued to me, and I still use it. Well, nah, I'm not going to be using it now that I have these. Once I, I've, I've been testing these still. For, I just got these radios on the Friday last day, and I've been working them and using them at work to make sure they work properly. And so far, everything's been good. These are P25 capable. And um, I'm not sure. I had the uh, company I got them for program for me, so I don't know if they're analog or digital or what they programmed them as. 48. But so far, so good. Now that they have the new batteries, I'm not having any transmission issues at all. Um, I was having some issues where the radio would just have a green light and just stay on. I don't know if that has something to do with a dead battery. I'm assuming it was. I just came to the conclusion that was a battery. I was getting the... Uh, I couldn't imitate it with my mouth because it's a certain sound you hear when the battery's low. It goes like, but up, but up, or something like that. <laughs> you guys that know about these radios already know that. So, all right, let's come down to it now. I got these radios. It's October 2019, and I got them for $125 each. If you go to useradio.com, you can also get them for $125. But the Model 2, they don't have any Model 3s. That's what I was really looking for. The Model 2 was $150. I said, man, I don't really want, if I, anything, I really want to get the Model 3 that has a DTMF and everything like that. I'm not going to pay for a little screen that just does not, it's not necessary for the work I'm doing, but I plan on getting my GMRS license and building a repeater, whether it's simplex or duplex, I don't know yet. I might just go ahead and just get the do, get the simplex real quick for 50 bucks, buy, uh, buy a simplex, buy the antenna, buy one um, you know, mobile head unit, and then put it together, and then later on, continue on buying, um, you know, buying everything else later. But, um, yeah, 125 each. I got the mic for 35, which is a pretty good deal because these are pretty expensive. For 100 bucks, you can get a brand new Motorola um, speaker lapel mic, but it's not this style. It has more features. What I really like is the volume feature. This, I don't think, works with the Model 1. I don't think I, I don't think I could change channels with this. I never actually tested that i'm going to test that later and see how that works but these buttons here work and the man down button i would assume is synchronized but it's not programmed right now in my program so yeah there you go i paid 250 for two of them not too bad now um the batteries that i got from amazon they're not motorola brand they're xts brand 2100 mah so, i don't know it's not focusing but they also work in other um, other radios like the XCS 5000, the MTP 200, uh, XT5 300, and the XCS 4200. I don't know if that's supposed to be the XCS 5300 or the XT 5300, but currently they work in both. I got the programming cables for them, and I have the uh, programming software. Haven't got into it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's. I'm a computer kind of guy, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty easy. To it's the same cable you use for the HT1000. You don't need to have that box anymore. It's just everything's incorporated in here, apparently. I haven't tested it yet, so hopefully that's good. How much did I pay for the cable? Paid for the cable $42.99 from eBay. I don't know why I didn't go to Amazon, but I got it from eBay. Yeah, so that's that. Um, without further ado, uh, We'll just test out some some communication here. So I've got the uh, commander here. A little too close. Knocking stuff down. Let me turn the volume down on this one. This is the one that's causing all that issue here. Let's try that again. 81 Central. Testing one two three three two one. This is a test of the Motorola XTS three thousand. Thanks for your patience and thanks for listening. Once again, this is a test of the XTS three thousand. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. You know, I'm messing around with. It. 
got some something going on. This is scanning. This one's scanning here. This is the regular X2S 3000. Oh, this is the R model. This is a test of the X3R 3000. Well, for some reason, it didn't come through. Well, let's try it again. Why did it come through the other time? Why, why didn't this radio transmit? So, yeah, that's why I'm testing them, because I don't know. These are used radios. I don't know whether they work or not. Just got them the other day. I got them while I was working. I didn't have time to really mess with them. Now's the time that I'm messing with them. For some reason, that first transmission didn't quite come through to any other radio. So, I don't understand that. Let's try that one more time. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, three, two, one. Testing, ABC. Testing, CBA. Sorry about the feedback, guys. Obviously, I'm sitting right here in front of them. And this one works fine. I, 81 Central. This one works fine. I've been using this one for work. And uh, there, at first, when I heard the uh, talk permit tone, I was thinking like, Psh, man, this thing is not working. It's not because when you go to a channel, it's not program. It just does that. Because those aren't programmed yet. Well, they're not programmed. I don't know what, what I'm going to do with them. Anything that's unprogrammed makes a tone like that. That specific note right there, you know, it's something unprogrammed. Like, it's unprogrammed, you know? Let's try that again with the same channel. Oh, we got a transmission here. 81 to base. See, I'm keyed down on the channel that everything else is on the same channel. C1. And right now, nothing else is receiving that. 48. See how how can I know that? I wouldn't know that if I'm trying to transmit, and um, I choose this. I move this over to the wrong channel. Put that back. Now the second time I bet you it'll work. Forty-one. So that's an issue. That's why this radio is kind of pissing me off. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna continue testing, and I got a ninety-day money-back guarantee. It says, uh, what does it say here? Let me pull it up so I know. Uh, it doesn't really say exactly, but I read it somewhere. I have 90 days. I don't have the information in front of me at this time, but if this thing keeps doing that, I can't trust this radio. How am I, how can I make a transmission saying something and then it's acting like it's transmitting, but nothing else is receiving it. This is the radio that does that. I thought it was a battery because I know I was having other battery issues. That's why I retired those two that came with it, bought two brand new ones. And it seems like this one transmits every time, no matter what. Transmit, transmit. Testing, transmit. One, one two. It's 48. That one works fine. 91. This one works most of the time, but sometimes it spooks me out like you just saw. Testing, 81. 122. I don't know, guys. I'm just messing around with the radios. Thanks for watching. If you're still tuned in, and we'll see you next time. If you guys are continuing to watching my videos, you'll see more. I'm gonna get a mobile. Um, I'm gonna build a base station and a repeater pretty soon here. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys next time.